Hello, what's up YouTube? It's Ask the Young One with CreateHigherVibrations.com um, It's been a minute since we've made a video. We've been doing a lot of self-work. Um, a lot of traveling and different things. I'm actually making this video right now from beautiful Indonesia. Um, I wanted to come on and answer a question. Uh, a, a subscriber left a really nice comment um, on one video and asked a question on another video. This is about scapegoat, uh, being a scapegoat, being a black sheep uh, in a narcissistic family dynamic. Um, so I'll read the question. It's, it's, it's a little bit lengthy, but mainly they want to know how to protect themselves. So um, it says, Dear Ask the Young One, what do you do when a family member and their children gaslight you and make you feel that you no longer that you are no longer welcome around them. They spread rumors and make up an identity which is nothing like who I really am. I don't understand why I am being the scapegoat for blame, hatred, and the family's problems. I am the black sheep. I am used as the family's excuse to communicate with others indirectly if they think someone is fat they will say look at her she is so fat so the other person gets the message indirectly they also suck me into their family drama with lies changing facts denying what they say i don't understand this level of hatred it seems diabolical to me can you speak about how to protect yourself from being devalued, scapegoated, compared to others, a reputation ruined and gaslighted? This kind of pain is what I believe hell is. And this is for Mary. Um, Mary, it seems diabolical because it is. This... Anytime a person is involved in a narcissistic family dynamic and you have where the where the you know the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree, so then you're there's multiple and you have a mini narcissist trying to appease the, the greater or the you know the queen narcissist in the family or, or however it may work. Um, that was kind of my experience. It really wasn't my family that it was about. It was more of the family I was married into and kind of how they did things. So I really didn't get to experience like the whole family dynamic as far as siblings and the actual parent being raised by a narcissist. Um, so I, I'll kind of, you know, there's many other people that I've worked with and talked to that ha have actually lived and experienced this. So what I'll say on this from my experience through the understandings that I have on this it is going to be more along the lines of um, if you're being devalued, if you're, if these people are continuously doing things, for one, you are the scapegoat. You're not going to be anything different because that's going to go against the narcissist narrative for that family. They're never going to change that. They're going to use you because you don't have boundaries in place that will stop them from doing this. Um, that is the, the whole why they continue to do it. You have to establish clear boundaries. And once you establish those clear boundaries, they're going to get really mad because you're not playing the game anymore. Um, they're probably going to do the smear campaigns and everything else, but they're going to, they're even, eventually they're going to stop and they're going to start leaving you alone because they, the only reason they keep coming back with it is because you allow it. Um, it is a very diabolical. It is very evil. It is very malicious how they do this. Um, when you have a family dynamic and you got one that's made the scapegoat from an early age because they, at an early age, weren't playing along with the narcissistic program going on in the family, then they're scapegoated their whole life. And 
you get those feelings of rejection. You get those feelings you don't belong because you don't. I mean, it's as simple as that. You don't belong in that family dynamic. And the way you protect yourself is you create boundaries. You start healing the areas of yourself that when you think they're devaluing you, you're not going to take that as a personal attack because you, your understanding is that is what they are. That's, the, that's how they function. It's, they're only doing it because that's the only perception these people understand to do to, to another person. And it has nothing to do with you. So they can devalue all, all day. They're really just devaluing themselves because it, it, to feel the devalue, you have to feel it within yourself, that it's something wrong with you. And you, you, you can't look at it like that. When, when you look at it like things to fix, then then you're looking at something as wrong so you, you don't want to go that route it's just whatever the feelings or emotions are that that creates in you those are the things that are going to give you some answers on how what inside of you that you need to fix uh, whether it's self-love self-worth um, changing some of the perception of how you view things being more open-hearted more open-minded um, will also help with being able to see past who these people are. As far as protection and true protection, your only true protection is to, you know, basically nice knowing you. I know you're my family, but that doesn't mean you're tied to these people. And you walk away and you recover and you go live your life the way you want to live it. That's how you truly protect yourself. They're going to do what they're going to do, and there's nothing you can do about that as far as controlling what they do. You set boundaries. If they smear campaign or try to ruin your reputation, if people truly know you, then those people will, will be able to get it. Um, that's really from my experience and even the people I've worked with that grew up in these family dynamics that they go no contact and they leave the family behind because that family no longer suits them in a a functioning way to where they can move forward in life it, it's a it's a it's extremely dysfunctional dynamic to control every person in the family dynamic and you're your place in that family dynamic is to be the punching bag and it always will be as long as you allow it so i hope that helps a little bit um, the main thing is to go live your life i don't care how old you are you have free will and that's another thing that you know so many of us are pre-programmed in our childhood is that we don't have free will and we owe these people something because we call them family um, and we forget we have a choice we can choose what we allow to happen to us or to uh, we we can choose what we allow around us in in our little worlds here that we live in and we can choose the type of world we want to live in we can choose a happiness or we can choose to be the punching bag so really, that it, that's how it, what it comes down to as far as the protection. Um, so with that, I mean, I, I, you got to look forward to what you will accept and create firm boundaries. If you have to deal with these people, you have to create firm boundaries with them. And you can't back off of those boundaries. Those boundaries are for you. They're not for them because they don't care about boundaries. Those boundaries are so that your happiness and your solace, your your being doesn't continue to be violated by these people. And I mean, my personal advice is I would cut ties and go live my life exactly the way you want to live it. You don't owe these people anything. And I don't care if it's a mom, a dad, if they're toxic, it doesn't matter. Only, the only way you would stay in that is by choice. 
if they're toxic and they're not good for your life and what you want to do in this life, then you walk away. You heal whatever is inside of you that might need some healing and you recover and you go live. And I don't care if you're 80 years old, 90 years old, it's never too late to live because life is short and you have to live it and you got to live it your way or else you're living their attachments, you're living their life and nobody deserves that. So with that, I will, uh, this is at 10 minutes, trying to keep them a little bit lower, but Indonesia is beautiful. So the sun is kind of going down now, but hear the cats probably. (laughs) Um, But with that, I'm gonna, I have several things I'm trying to do. So I will hopefully make some more videos. I do want to talk a little bit on the next one about um, the purging of narcissism, which I I truly believe um, with everything that's coming up in the world with Hollywood and the pedophiles and everything, there's a root cause to it and it's narcissism. Um, When you look at what these people are capable of and those behaviors, there's so much involved and the narcissism needs to start being dealt with in in a different way. it can't it can't continue to be just overlooked as a disorder that nobody knows what to do about the world of psychology laws etc need to change in this in especially in the US and I'm sure in, in many other countries the UK and all over you know all over the world but it's everywhere and things need to change and and I think they are and that's why all these things are purging up all over the place it's just not a lot of people are tying this all down to the root um, so hopefully I'm going to get a video up that talks some, a little bit about that. And I hope, Mary, that this helped a little bit and at least gives you, gives you some direction, some ideas. I know you mentioned in another comment you have some great support with your son and husband. And I hope from there you can move along and live your life. It's absolutely a beautiful thing to do when you can break the attachment from those, from those toxic people. So with that, I hope everyone has a a great day, and I'll see you on the next video. All love and respect to everyone. Namaste.